Just to let you know, both my sound design course and brand new Skrillex inspired preset pack are 30% off for the next week only. Check the links in the description. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at six techniques Skrillex used all over his new album. Now, bear in mind, not all of these are one-to-one -one recreations. What I'm really trying to do with this video is give you a bunch of sound design techniques you can do your own thing with. Let's kick things off straight away with this rumble inspired bass. So I've seen quite a few different approaches to this bass sound online. A few people theorizing that it comes from a kick sample, other people using the method of just triggering a sound at 16th notes. I thought I'd mix it up and give you guys a little bit of something different for this video. Also, I am gonna show you the kind of FM bass that you hear at the start here. We're gonna be covering that in just a second, but let's first of all focus on the main rumble bass. The bass sound is really, really simple. We just have this basic MG square wave being passed through a low pass 24 dB filter, a little bit of distortion and another filter in the effects chain after. So all we've got down here is first of all, just an EQ to roll off some of the highs. It's not really doing too much because of our filter and our synth. Then I just have a little bit of saturation. And then the main thing on our sound here is LFO tool which is giving us that kind of 16th note rhythm that you hear in the original track. Now, I'm not sure if this is exactly how Skrillex did this. It might have just been a kind of sequence sound being triggered by 16th notes, but I really like using this technique instead because we can just very easily change the rate if we want to without having to go into our MIDI and change everything up. But the really cool thing I like about this sound and this version of the sound is I'm using RC20 here to add some envelope follower noise. And the way this envelope follower module works in RC20 when you set the follow to full, it will only trigger the noise sample whenever it detects audio. So by using LFO tool and then placing RC20 and this envelope follower after LFO tool in the signal chain, it's only gonna trigger the noise when this triggers, which is a really cool effect. I then just automated the noise amount so that over the course of the sound, the noise gets louder and louder. I think in the original track, it could have just been hi-hats that were getting louder, but I think this is a really cool effect. We then put this back into our arrangement. The cool thing with LFO tool as well is we can dial in the shape. So if we want to go for more of like the almost kick light texture to this bass, we can make this really short. So not much of the actual tone of the bass is coming through. She's like a cool kind of minimal sound, or we can increase this envelope and get more of the kind of original tone and note of the bass coming through. Okay, so now let's take a look at by far the easiest way to achieve those Skrillex style vocal chops. So first of all, we just have our original vocal here. You know that I got a crush on you. Stuck on my heart, all the things you do. So say we really like this vocal, we wanna chop it up and turn it into a really cool vocal chop. All you have to do is load in an instance of Simpler, just drag it onto an external MIDI track and then drag and drop your vocal in. Now by default, the sensitivity will likely be at about 100%. And the way this works is it will chop up mostly kind of like vowels, which can be fine. A lot of the time with vocal chops, people will take a vocal, they'll chop out, you know, the R's and O's and stuff like that and sequence a new melody. But the key to this trick, I think, is to turn the sensitivity down a little bit. So I think I had this at 61%. And now our chops will be a little bit broader. They'll have more than just vowels. They'll have like one or two words or even just a phrase. So if I just play this across my keyboard now. Are you part of the things you love and love and so you can hear some of these are still just vowels and stuff like that, but a lot of these are just little small phrases. And I think that's really the key with this technique. So then what you can do, once you've kind of set the sensitivity to something you're happy with, I'd recommend increasing the fade in and fade out. This is just gonna get rid of all the clicks from the starts of these chops. And then you can right click and slice to drum rack. And now we can trigger all these slices like we would drums. You know that, are you 
got a crush on all the things. And now we can go into our MIDI. You can see I've already played around with this and set it up. And we can trigger all of our individual slices this way. Really, really cool. The reason I much prefer doing it this way as opposed to sequencing it in the arrangement is we now can just very flexibly change our MIDI if we want. Really, really cool. And then once we've reached this point, we can add some processing. So here I just added a little bit of Alter Boy, just decreased the format a bit and pitched it up for semitones and added a little drive. Really cool. Maybe a little bit of EQ to roll off some of the lows and a bit of play reverb. Really, really fun technique. It's so fun to just come up with brand new melodies this way. And it doesn't really matter, to be honest, if the, you know, the words don't make sense or it's kind of nonsensical. One really cool thing that happens sometimes as well is that you end up almost hearing new phrases and new words, almost like subconsciously. Skrillex does this kind of nonsensical vocal chopping quite a lot. So definitely worth playing around with. So just as a quick follow-up to our vocal chops, I also want to demonstrate that this is possible with other samples as well. So here I've got a djembe, I think, I think that's how you pronounce it at least. Percussion loop from Splice. And what I've done here is the exact same thing. So I dropped this into another instance of Simpler and then did the slice the drum rack technique. And now we have all of these kind of sliced up here. And we can resequence it. So I've got here some MIDI and I was kind of going for a similar sound to the Skrillex Xena track. Really, really cool. So this is something you might also want to think about playing with, not just kind of vocal chops, but taking percussion loops and, you know, doing a similar thing. So one type of sound that is all over the Skrillex album is the classic FM bass. Now there's quite a lot of different variations of this all throughout the album. I'm just going to show you a kind of basic setup that you can use as a template and then just kind of experiment and do your own thing with. So let's just have a quick listen to quite a simple FM bass. Really, really satisfying sound, I'm sure a lot of you recognize. Also, this bass is included in my new preset pack, by the way, 30% off, don't forget, you can check it out in the description. But let's take a look at how you can actually go about making one of these yourself. And then I'm gonna show you a trick to get a kind of more aggressive sound as well, very easily, that's kind of similar to a lot of the bass sounds on the album. But let's just turn everything off for now apart from the basics. So you can see we've just got a basic sine wave here and a low pass filter. And the low pass filter has been triggered by this envelope. And this is the amplitude envelope here. Make sure you switch mono on. All we have to do is load oscillator B. We can set this to be another sine wave. And then we have our FM from B here. And we're using the same envelope we're using for our filter cutoff to modulate the FM amount. So as you can see, oscillator B here, the level is all the way down. This is acting purely as a modulator for our carrier, which is oscillator A. So there's a few different things, obviously, that will shape the FM sound we're going for. We've just been playing around with the actual FM amount, which is one way. The other two ways are, firstly, the octave of our oscillator we're modulating this with. So we could turn this up, for instance. I think I just had this set to minus one. But also the waveform itself that we use will shape the harmonics that we get as a result as well. Now, as for effects here and this sound, we have some distortion. This is also being triggered by the same envelope. One thing I really love with plip basses is to use the same envelope to modulate a lot of different things. It results in the bass sound sounding a bit more cohesive. And then just to kind of tame back some of that distortion a little bit, I added another filter in the effects here. 
really cool trick. I love that serum lets you do this. And then this is very subtle. I'm not sure if you're even going to be able to hear this. Probably more noticeable if we increase the cutoff and distortion. But I just set a simple notch EQ just to add another extra little bit of flavor at the end. So this is pretty much your standard FM kind of pluck bass. It's all over the Skrillex album. But how do we also go about actually, you know, making this sound a little bit more aggressive or a bit more interesting? Down here, we have an audio effect track. This is a really simple trick that I like to use a lot on sounds like this. And I've created two signal chains. First of all, we've just got a dry chain. This is what we've been listening to. But then I've also set up this additional train, which I've just called wet, which has an additional distortion. We're just using a rift here by minimal audio, really nice distortion. Also ozone imager to make it super wide as well as an EQ to roll off some of the lows. And you can see I've turned down the amplitude of this as well. And if we layer this with our original bass, and this is a really, really effective way to add another layer to the bass without actually adding another audio track. And this is just a really clean way to do this. So now what we can do is go through some different distortion presets. And this is just a really, really fun way to add a nice other layer of distortion to our sound, especially when combined with this stereo imaging layer here to make it really wide, really kind of fun to play around with. So yeah, have fun with that one. Again, if you want to get this preset, it is part of my new pack, 30% off, check it out. Okay, so now we have a really cool trick that I think is actually my favorite in the video. Very, very simple to use, but really, really effective. And it's his use of vocoders. Now, I think there's two tracks in particular, Skrillex uses this on the album, the track with Forte and also the track called A Street I Know uses this as well. So a lot of you are probably familiar with how vocoders work. Let me just quickly show you the original vocal we're working with here. Really, really beautiful Latin American vocal. So the way you'd usually use a vocoder would be you take something like just a basic synth with some saw waves and write some chords for it. So we've got these. So let's just switch this vocoder on here. We've set carrier to external. It's taking audio from Serum and it's going to use those saw waves to vocode our vocal here. So that's a sound you're probably familiar with, you've probably heard. It doesn't really matter kind of what key our original vocal is in because it's only really using the melody from the chords that we're using as an external carrier for the vocoder. However, one really cool trick is to bring down the dry wet amount on this and to make sure that the melody that you're using to feed into the vocoder is in key with the original vocal. And what happens is you get this really nice layered sound between the chords or melody that you're feeding in and the melody of the original vocal. I've also just added a little bit of a vocal plate reverb as well. Just an absolute beautiful sound. This kind of blending between the original vocal and the chords that are in key sounds amazing. And again, make sure you do make your vocals in key with whatever you're feeding into the vocoder. Just as a bonus trick as well, auto pan can sound really, really good on vocals. Again, we've got this about 50% and um, you can set the rate and all that kind of stuff. Quiero pasar la so I'm sure a lot of you that have listened to the new album, like me, agree that it seems to be very kind of UK influenced. Now, I might be a little bit biased, obviously, but it seems to be much more kind of minimal, much more laid back. A lot of the bass sounds, you know, kind of moving away from the kind of classic Skrillex growl sound. And I have to say, I do kind of prefer the more minimal side of dubstep. And so I thought we'd finish the video with a very kind of classic dubstep wobble bass. <laughs> 
really, really nice, clean sound. And a lot of the bass sounds on the album are really like this. There's a lot of kind of space in between a lot of sounds. And a lot of them sound very deep, very kind of pure and subby. And this is a sound I absolutely love. It's just absolutely classic. Again, this is one of the presets in the pack. It's actually quite a simple one. We're just going to turn the sub oscillator off for now. So all we've got here is this fast Fourier transform uh, digital wavetable. And you can see as you kind of cycle through the wavetable, you get all these additional harmonics with just a sine wave at the start. So what we've done here is set up an LFO to modulate this wavetable position. So it starts off at the sine wave and then goes through the harmonics, which is really, really nice. It produces a really, really harmonically clean sound. <laughs> In addition to that, we just have a very simple low pass 12 dB filter. We've made sure that our amplitude here is set to 100% sustain. We want the sound to carry on as long as we hold a note down. In the effects here, we just have, first of all, a hyper dimension effect just to add some size to the sound. <laughs> And we've also got a high pass EQ here to make room for our sub, which we're going to talk about in just a second. You can also see here we've got a macro set to our LFO's rate. If we go into our track here, we'll turn our automation on. <laughs> And I've also laid in a sub oscillator here. This is because although we're getting some nice harmonics from moving through this wavetable position, it does mean at this point in the LFO, it's going to lose a little bit of low end compared to just the sine at the start. So to remedy this, we can just have our sub oscillator here set to a sine wave. Same octave as our oscillator. We're going to switch direct out on so it skips through these effects. We obviously don't want a sub oscillator going through the high pass EQ. <laughs> And then if we go into our effects chain down here, I just have a very simple Valhalla vintage reverb here. And what I've done is set up a little bit of automation. You can see in between the notes here, I've increased the mix amount of the reverb to 100%. And if we go into the EQ, you can see there's a low cut here. So we're not rooting any low frequencies through this. It's something that I noticed a lot on the Skrillex album is that even though there was a lot of space in certain tracks between different bass sounds, that space would be occupied by some really cool tails. So if we just listen through this. And with this automation, this isn't getting in the way of the bass at all. It's just a really nice way to kind of add some depth to the sound, especially if you're going for something that's a little bit more minimal. So yeah, I thought I'd just finish with a kind of classic dubstep sound there. I really love that in the album, he seems to have gone back to some of the kind of roots of dubstep in the UK and that kind of thing. So that pretty much covers everything I've got for you in this video, guys. I hope you found something useful and inspiring. Again, don't forget that both my sound design course and brand new preset pack for Serum are both 30% off. If you want to learn sound design in a kind of more structured way with me as your instructor, I highly recommend checking out the course. I put a lot of work into the course and I think that literally anyone could go through it and come out of it having a really, really good fundamental knowledge of sound design. So definitely check that out. Go check out the preset pack again. That 30% off is only going to be for the next week or so. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.